All right, so this is day two of my workout routine. I'm doing the full body workout. I'll wrote, write out my workout in the in the notes here in the description. So kind of what I like to do every time, I like to warm up, get some squats in. And one of the things I always do, if you watch me set up, uh, you'll see on the next set, is that I try to, I place my feet, I, I make sure that I pull my shoulder blades back, I position myself so that way I can really open up my chest and my rib cage while my stomach is tight. And then once I get the bar to where I want it to be in my back, I really squeeze my glutes to make sure my pelvis is in neutral position. I brace my stomach and then I do it again. I squeeze my glutes, brace my stomach. And what I'm doing is I'm creating torque in the hips by kind of pushing out the feet. So in this shot, I, I didn't watch myself stepping back but part of the reason why I'm trying to turn my feet out or not really, I'm trying to push my knees out and, and screw my feet into the ground, externally rotating, is to make sure that my pelvis stays solid. Because one of the things you don't want when you squat is getting that butt wink where those hips roll underneath your torso. And that, and typically that happens very, very commonly with people because of their hamstrings being tight. Now watch me as I kind of brace my stomach. You can see my pelvis kind of tilt in and I do it twice. And what I do is, again, I'm bracing my abs, making sure my pelvis is in a very solid position. And then I make sure my foot is set up, my feet are set up well. My left leg is always really strong. It actually tends to do most of the work. It's really my right leg where I'm missing some range of motion in the hip. It's much tighter. And what ends up happening is my left hip and glute and low back tend to overwork versus my right side as I squat this 225 pounds. I always try my best to get below parallel. Uh, again, I, I, I've said in a previous video, the reason why I go, I don't go all the way down, I go all the way down and I almost kind of pause at the bottom is because every time I go up too fast, um, I tend to get a little shock on my knee and I try to prevent that from happening. So you can see how I, I kind of tilt my pelvis forward or kind of not tilt it, but just make sure it's in neutral. I brace my glutes and activate everything nice and tight. And then I begin the squats. Here I got 235 and I'm just kind of really going for it. And I have my band, my mobility wad uh, band on. I'm just squatting. Uh, as you can see, my pelvis and my lower back stay pretty flat the entire time. And my body moves as a unit. Alright, so this is my second workout of the day. I kind of broke up my workout because I was I spent basically uh, 30 to 40 minutes mobilizing my hips, hamstrings, and glutes to make sure I can get into that bottom squat. I was hoping to get my deadlifts and squats out of the way, which I did in yesterday's video and the day before. And what I'm doing is I'm just I'm rowing, doing light light 500 two minute two minute row. And I just I find that I get a really good stretch in the inner thighs where I'm really tight, and I just get to warm up my low back a little bit and my upper back before I do my sets of deadlifts. Now I'm kind of happy about this workout because I managed to kind of hammer everything in uh, within uh, 50 minutes. So here I'm deadlifting 275 pounds, which is usually really light for me, because, but because I'm planning on deadlifting every day, I'm trying to not overwork myself. My legs can tolerate a lot of a lot of a beating, but my upper body cannot because of my elbows, wrists, and shoulder, and my low back actually. And I'm doing sets of eight. At 275 pounds, this puts me at about 72%, a little over 70% on my one repetition max. Here I'm wearing a belt, and I find that wearing a belt is definitely much more safer, especially when I'm working out at a higher volume. And I need to get in the habit of, of using a belt more often, so that way I can work out my body more often. I try not to depend on a belt too much, because I really do like being able to strengthen my back and core. Alright, here we go again. Last set of eight. <laughs> Oh, and as you notice on this set, I actually have a deficit deadlift. I'm actually standing on a, uh, a plate that's about, I don't know, about an inch and a half tall. And the reason why is because I'm, the, the, uh, the barbell is bouncing. And because of that bounce, I'm trying to just not, I'm trying to get rid of that bounce, but not lose my rhythm. So I'm kind of like to mess around with things a little bit and just kind of add them in as I go. I figure I can make it harder since the weight's not too heavy for me. Uh, the thing I, I do like about this is that it allows me to kind of experiment with the lighter weights and really focus on my upper body form. 
Now here I'm doing bent over rows. It just it felt pretty convenient. The order I do it in has to do with convenience, you know, because you can see, you know, after I did the deadlifts, I could just unrack here and just row here uh, on the platform. So I do a set of eight with uh, 55 pounds, 155 pounds. And then it felt a little bit light. Uh, I'm actually doing a pendulet row. So I put 165 pounds on here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep my body as up, I mean, a, a, in the same position as possible, though it's very hard because I, I pick a little heavy of a weight. But I want to challenge myself so I can really activate those lats. Actually, at this time, my low back was actually a little bit tight. So that's kind of why you saw me kind of flinch there at the end. This is my third set. And again, I'm doing more rowing, keeping the elbows in tight, touching the ground each time. I like pendulet rows because what it does is it allows me to uh, work my back really good and um, basically protect my lower back, I should say. That's what I, really, what I meant. So here I'm doing seated row. I only do one set, and the main reason was I wanted to do bench right after bent over rows, but because there was somebody else on the bench, I had to wait for a moment. And as I was as I was doing the seated row, what ended up happening was the bench press opened up. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna freaking do the bench press. All right, so here I load up the bar, and you know I'm pretty warm. I feel pretty good. Um, so I go ahead and just load 185 on here and just kind of hammer through. I'm about I'm I'm 5'8", 190 pounds or 188 pounds. And I feel pretty strong. I think I hammer out 10 here. And I keep my hands fairly close. Uh, I mean, I try my best to keep my forearms as parallel as possible. It's kind of hard to tell. It doesn't look like they're parallel because of the because of the angle of the camera. But here I have 205 pounds for my second set. I do a set of eight. My rep range is about eight to 10 reps. Again, staying at about 75%. I, I can't remember if this is 75% or not because I, my, my one rep max is about 285. And this is my last set. Feeling pretty strong today on the bench. Yesterday I did, I did dumbbells. I uh, wasn't really. Uh, I wanted to do bench yesterday, but you know there's people on the bench, so I just had to get my workout in, and I did the best I could. And that felt good. So now I just. I was gonna do more seated rows, but I said forget it. I'll just do some pull-ups. I managed to get, uh, I think, eight pull-ups here. Yesterday I did, I think, a set of ten, eight, and nine. Today I did a set of eight, and then I did a set of six, I think, maybe seven. Definitely starting to feel my elbows a little bit because of my uh, tight shoulders, overuse of the shoulder, uh, or tight shoulders can cause overuse of the elbow. And I have to cross my legs sometimes to make sure my hamstrings don't cramp. So you want to make sure that your stomach stays tight and you brace your abs really good. And then I go and do overhead presses. I'm doing a little bit heavier than I should as 135 pounds strict press. And my hands are a little wider than they should be now that I notice it now. I think I do five or six. And to be totally honest, I just did this because I did... I did I was too lazy to unrack the weight. I was like, fuck it, I'll just go ahead and do the 135 pounds. So here I'm foam rolling or self mile fashion, releasing my my triceps to kind of get a better overhead position because my triceps, the long head's super, super tight. And what I'm trying to do is free that up during my rest period here. I figure I might, might as well be productive and do something. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I learned this from the Mobility Wad uh, with Kelly Starrett. Love his stuff. If you're in the barbell training and you really love human movement, you'll love his stuff. Okay, here I go. I do another set. And the thing I uh, I feel here is that my left um, levator scapula or my left um, uh, kind of trap area kind of gets a little pinch or a little shock. So I kind of have to be careful with overhead pressing and shrugging because uh, I pulled my neck a few months ago and it's really annoying when it gets irritated. Here I just want to share some of the music I listen to. I, I was listening to Pandora. And I think I was listening to Tool. This is Tool. Yeah, this is Tool. And then I lower the weight. I go to 135 pounds, or 135, 115 pounds. Much lighter, but I still feel that little shock in my neck. It's annoying, so I kind of have to like chill out a little bit. Once I lose my momentum and speed, I just stop. Cut my losses. I'm trying to preserve my joints and muscles so I can keep working out. 
Here I'm doing some bicep curls, the gun show workout. Uh, I kind of had to rush through it. I usually get a little bit of rest period. I do a heavier weight. This is 65 pounds, which is fairly light. It's very light. And I, only, I do 10 reps. It turns out 10 reps is actually pretty hard at this weight for me, especially today. And after that, I go and do the tricep pushdowns right afterwards. And I like to break them up. I like doing uh, skull crushers instead. If you see yesterday's video, the video before this, I did um, skull crushers. I just feel like it carries over better for improving bench and overhead pressing and stretching out that long head of the tricep. But I was kind of running short on time and I didn't have time to set up and I just needed to hammer through this. I like this. Uh, a lot of clients like this workout. Uh, maybe not bar, not maybe not the easy curl bar, but I'll have them use dumbbells instead. And you can get their arms really uh, pumped up, especially girls, ladies who like to um, get toned arms. And they can really feel it. And they get a little bit of a sweat going. And a big part of it, too, is ju it's just physically painful you know for a lot of people who don't not used to doing arms this hurts you know you feel your forearms get tight you feel your your biceps get tight and it feels just really good for a lot of people who are trying to improve their arms I'm not much into doing arms but because now I'm doing lighter weights and not such heavier reps going for my one rep max I'm just trying to like stimulate the muscles every single day and see how much I can get away with at lower volumes I'm training at 70 percent every day at all these lifts Uh, with the tricep push tie, I try my best to get my upper arm to line up with the cable that allows for a better position and better activation of the tricep.